it's a, a, a bug that never went away. It used to be uh, very nasty all before the Second World War. And the thing that really knocked it on the head was penicillin because it's very, very sensitive to penicillin. It still is. It's never developed resistance against penicillin, which is the one piece of good news. And that sorted out the problems it used to cause. Um, it, and it used to cause lots of um, um, scarlet fever, which is a rash, where the bug is, starts in the throat, produces a toxin, which causes the rash. And sometimes then it spread to places like the ears, and, and sometimes, very occasionally, as we're seeing now, very occasionally, and still very occasionally, it can spread into the bloodstream or it can cause a kind of intoxication, a sort of toxic shock syndrome, which can be very, very serious, puts uh, children into intensive care and that sort of thing. There are other things it does as well. It's a very versatile bug and we've never been able to develop a vaccine against it, but we can treat it very successfully with penicillin. The problem is making the diagnosis of uh, strep A is quite difficult because it can do so many different things. And many of the things it does, like a sore throat, uh, usually are caused by other bugs or viruses which are not sensitive. So it's a, it's a diagnostic difficulty to, to spot a case uh, early enough, um, although usually that's not necessary because most um, people who have strep A carry it without any problems at all, or they have a mild infection. So in terms of what people can look out for, I know there's a lot of parents that are concerned, particularly about the children at the moment. Is it just those sort of typical illness symptoms that we see a lot, like a sore throat? Is there anything that stands out that they can be looking out for? Well, the one thing that really should, uh, and, and always will, uh, raise the <laughs> sound the alarm bells are if the child is really sick uh, with, a, with a range of symptoms. It's got a high fever, it may have vomiting and diarrhea, it may have the rash, it may not have the rash, um, and um, it, it, it's got aching limbs, it just feels absolutely rotten, and obviously it's telling its parents that it's feeling absolutely rotten in the way young children do. Um, and those are the warning signs, and now I think there's a slightly lower threshold for, for example, GPs to prescribe penicillin. Um, generally speaking, they don't like doing that because that might encourage penicillin resistance. Uh, but having said that, I think there's now, um, they'll be more likely to prescribe penicillin, even if it is actually a viral infection, just to be on the safe side. So you're saying about prescribing penicillin once it's been diagnosed, um, they there have been announcements that schools that have seen children and outbreaks in their schools of strep A, that they will now be offering um, antibiotics as sort of a preemptive measure. What do, do you, what do you say to that? Well, yes, I mean, that, that's being, being talked about. And uh, if there was a big outbreak in a, in a, in a classroom in a school, uh, that might be considered by the local public health people. Uh, it is a little bit controversial. It was tried way, way back in the 1950s when there were outbreaks of scarlet fever in sort of military camps where there are lots of people very close together. And um, what it tended to do, it, it sorted the problem out for the period that you were giving the antibiotics. So when you um, stopped the antibiotics, it came back. So it's not the answer to the problem. It might be very helpful in a particular circumstance if there was a big outbreak in a particular school. I don't think most of the cases we've been hearing about have been like that. They've, they've occurred almost out of the blue. And so that's more difficult in the sense of, you know, you haven't got an outbreak, you can call in the public health people. Yes, we've got an outbreak. Yes, we'll give penicillin to everybody. Um, uh, and I, I think there still might be a bit of reluctance to do that because, as I've said, it doesn't all sort a problem out. So not necessarily a definitive way to, to stop this or prevent this. You, you mentioned scarlet fever and the 50s, and scarlet fever is something that people are probably a lot more familiar with than strep A. I mean, even from watching films like The Velveteen Rabbit, it's something that's very well known. Um, why is it that this is now, these outbreaks are now coming about, like I say, it's not gone away, but why are we seeing, why are we seeing them cropping up, cropping up now? Why was this not last year, for example? Well, I, I think the general view is that during COVID um, lockdown time, you know, social distancing and a lot of hand washing, you know, hand sanitizing and even wearing masks, those are the sort of things that stop the streptococcus as well as COVID. And 
we now we've relaxed on all those things. The kids are all back again, mingling with each other, and the bug is now going back to where it was before. It was held back, and there's a rebound. And now whether that's due to um, a decline in immunity in the children is hard to say because the immunity against the strep is very, very complicated. And uh, it's one of the reasons why we've never been able to develop a vaccine, for example. So it's slightly more complicated than saying, oh, it's just decline in immunity because the bug wasn't around. And we've known that this has happened before, uh, be be long before the uh, COVID appeared. We've had the surges in cases. There was one in the late 80s and 90s, for example, um, uh, international surge in cases. Uh, and, uh, you know, there was one about five years ago. So the bug comes and goes for reasons best known to itself, let's put it like that, except that we obviously have to be aware when it is on the up, we, we have to take all these, well, we have to remind people that the bug hasn't gone away and it can be nasty. Usually not, but it can be. Yeah, I think that's why it's being talked about. There's lots of, you know, looking at what action needs to be taken when these cases crop up and um, what to look out for, like we've discussed. But how you know how worried should parents be because that's what we're talking about a lot is the ch is cases in children is what we're seeing you know the latest is being a five-year-old in in belfast um that we've heard about so how worried should parents be over strep a and their children I, there's absolutely no need to panic um what parents have to do is what good parents will do anyway if their child is really sick take medical advice and I think they should be reassured by the fact that there's been so much publicity that there's going to be a lower threshold for the prescription of penicillin by GPs. You can only get penicillin on prescription anyway. And so there's, you, you've really got to take medical advice before you can get the penicillin. But if, you're, if a parent is at all worried, uh, even if it turns out that the child has got the, you know, an ordinary virus that's going around, um, on the safe side, give penicillin. And uh, that is very effective at treating the bug if it's got, particularly if it's if it's given early uh, in the infection. So there's a bit of onus on, on on parents, but I think the behavior of GPs, well, the behavior, but the the way GPs approach these cases will be slightly different, and they will have this lower threshold for prescribing penicillin until we can, and, until this particular surge in cases has has faded away, which it will do eventually. I think people will take comfort in hearing that. Um, as like I say, lots of lots of concern over it at the moment. Um, well, that's been that's been great. Thanks, thanks so much for taking the time to speak to me this morning. Um, that's been more than helpful. Thank you very much.